Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to be coloring a happy storm, if there is such a thing, using the Rain or Shine stamp set from My Favorite Things. And in the stamp set, there are two little girls in it. I'm just going to be coloring one of the little girls, and I'm going to speed color a little bit through coloring her and her outfit and her umbrella because the focus of this video is on coloring the background. Last week I did a card using a different stamp set with a little boy in it and kind of asked if people wanted a video on how to color that background because for the most part there's some backgrounds I feel are kind of straightforward. You can kind of figure out how to do it and enough people said they wanted a video that I thought okay maybe I'm making an assumption that I shouldn't. So here you go, you're going to get to see the background in just a few minutes. I have stamped her onto some Nina cardstock. This is the 80 pound cardstock and a lot of people have been asking recently why I don't use the 110. And I use the 110 occasionally if I have a limited image that I'm going to use on maybe a one layer card because it doesn't bleed through very much. When I say limited image, if it's something where I, I'm really just going to color a small amount of it and I'm not so concerned about the blending because with that paper it doesn't bleed through as much with the 110 but it's really hard to get the blending to work because that the fact that it's so thick means the paper is not absorbing the color it's not blending it within the fibers of the paper so the 110 ends up being much harder to get a good blend things tend to pool up a little bit more and just act a little weird so there are some people that love the idea that it doesn't blend through, bleed through the paper, but they have to use different blending techniques, and I prefer to use the blending techniques I can get on my 80-pound paper, and I just layer it onto something else on my card. No big deal. So I have colored her jacket and stuff. You may have noticed uh, I was blathering about other things while that was going on, but I used a purple for the shadowing. I used a blue-violet. And then I went in with an orange because the blue-violet was too dull for what I was liking. When I use a purple to shade a yellow, it's because it's a complement color. If you've taken the Copic Jumpstart class, you'll know that complements do a great job most of the time of shading. But the blue-violet is a little off-center of, of the direct opposite. It should be a violet, and a V is going to work a little bit better as a shadow color with a yellow rather than a BV, because you get that kind of grayish look. So there's my mini explanation of that. I'm coloring my umbrella and jacket and everything in the same colors as the card that I did last week on my blog. And I just thought I'd keep it simple and straightforward and do that. I will show you a third card at the end with the other little girl that is in the stamp set, because, you know, I like to color all the stamps. Since I often don't end up keeping the stamp sets, I give them out in my customer appreciation mailings, which uh, another one is coming up very soon. I pick random customers to send out my stamps to that I, I'm not going to be able to use again. And some stamps that I don't think I'm going to necessarily color repeatedly, I will put in that box and then just send them out randomly to wonderful people who are students in my classes or people who have bought the hex chart, that kind of thing just to say thank you and to make sure the stamps have a good home and get used by someone because I don't have enough time and energy to color absolutely everything over and over and over again. So then it clears my stash so I can buy more stamps to be able to teach you more things with all the new wonderful goodies that come out all the time. So now that the stamp is colored, we're on to the background and I just picked a random B21 and it's kind of a, a light-ish, not super light, but a light-ish kind of a blue. And to make the happy storm, I'm going to allow kind of some sunshine to come in. I'm not going to give it yellow sunshine, but it's going to be heavier and color, more colorful behind her and a little more white in front of her because that's going to give the impression that maybe the storm is ending. There's a, a stop in the storm. There's a break in it and it's going to give some lightness rather than having the entire background colored because sometimes just a solid background with lots of rain can feel really oppressive 
and this will give it a little bit more of a light feel. So next I switch to the B zeros. A B2 is going to be a little more dull than a B0 because again in Kobe Jumpstart I do a whole big big long study and lesson on the saturation level of something and the saturation level is that first digit and the first digit is a zero here so it's going to be a brighter blue and you can mix all different kinds of blues in here and, and switch around between them you can use B6s which will feel a little more purpley because they are duller or you can push it more toward the very light blues here's a B01 it's got a little more intensity of color but it's still that really bright blue and go over top these layers I'm using the side of the marker to make really long strokes this is a great kind of background to practice your flicking so if you're one who is who needs some practice in flicking this is a great one for that and I'm using a B45 because I wanted again that heavier darker color behind her and the the four is going to be a, a bit duller of a color and I'm going to let it work toward slowly brightening up on the right hand side of her the washi tape down at the bottom is protecting the bottom of the card and if you're too crazy with your flicking and you go too far in that direction make sure that you have some other paper down there to mask that off and then I'm going to use a B41 to start blending some of that into those lighter colors that I've put on there already and just kind of throw a few strokes in here and there because the B41 is related to the B45 so it's going to feel like you're carrying that same thing across the, the whole card even though one is lighter than the other. I drew a few splashes down there on the bottom. In the stamp set there are some actual splash marks or splash stamps sorry not marks and you could stamp some of those in there or you could just draw them yourself like I just did with your Copic marker. I wanted to add a little flavor of a purple to it so I'm adding a BV. You could add all different kinds of beautiful colors in here as well to mix them in to create this kind of streaky rainstorm. And notice that not everything's perfectly blended and that's kind of the intent of this. That's part of what happens when you're doing this kind of a thing and you can use that to your benefit. So I'm going to add some raindrops now. I have two zero markers. This one is a little drier and you'll notice I'm going to get sharper strokes with it, little sharper dots, and I'm not getting kind of juicy blobs at the end of, of each one of those. And I'm notice I'm holding the marker really sideways and just kind of sketching along with it to put some drops in there. Then I got a marker that was really juicy and it was over juicy in some ways because all I'm doing is one stroke and I'm holding the marker at a vertical because I didn't want so much color coming out because it was so juicy. So you can gauge your the, the kinds of strokes you make based on how juicy your marker is. And then on a few of them I'm going to go in with a white pen and just emphasize the especially the ends of the drops and then let it get lighter as it gets to the skinny part of the drop and put some drops right over top of the image because that's going to look like she's in the middle of the storm rather than the storm just being around or behind her so she's going to be part of it this way I'm also not putting drops all over everything in up in that darker corner up in the top left I'm not going to use as many drops just a smaller quantity because the focus is going to be where the detail is and all of those drops are going to pull the focus to seeing her and her little rainstorm as opposed to getting lost in that background. So I'll take a little emphasis off that. To finish my card, I just used some dimensional adhesive and popped it up onto the card base, trimmed it down a little bit smaller than that, and left it really simple like that. You could go in with some glossy accents on the raindrops and add some shine to them, which could be kind of fun as well. This is the card that I did last week with the same technique. This little boy is kicking up some raindrops, so that was what inspired the look. And this one uses a technique from the new Blue Skies class over at art-classes.com. Since it is a cloudy sky, I thought it would be a good one to use for a little image like this one from this stamp set.
Thank you so much for joining me for this video. And if you liked it, click the like button. You can watch some more videos. You can click through to the Blue Skies Copic class or just head over to the blog or to the supply list in the description. And I'll see you later.